Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will quickly implement linear regression with gradient descent from scratch in Python without using any machine learning libraries. Okay. So for this implementation, I am considering a simple small data set which is available in Kaggle. The link I have mentioned in the notebook that I will be uploading in the GitHub and the link will be provided in the description. So the data set is called as Swedish Auto Insurance. It's a small data set of 6364 records. It has one dependent variable and one independent variable. Okay, So it is linear regression with one variable or in other words, it's also called as univariate linear regression. Okay, So let's start implementing it. So I am initially importing some of the libraries NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib for visualization. And then I will be reading the data set. I have downloaded this CSV file in my local machine and I am reading it from my local only using pandas read CSV method. Okay. So now I have read the data set. I need to define some functions. Okay. So I will be making use of three functions one to calculate the hypothesis or predictions, another function to compute the cost, our mean squared error, and another function the main gradient descent algorithm okay so let's first start with defining our hypothesis okay so i'll name it compute hypothesis okay so this will require two parameters correct so how we will calculate our hypothesis or prediction it is theta transpose x right so i need the params that is thetas and x okay x is our data the features or feature okay so i got those two uh, those two arguments here and then i'll say predictions is equal to params dot t comma x and this is our matrix multiplication so i can do matrix multiplication by simply stating np dot mat mul stands for matrix multiplication and i have to pass two matrices to it or two numpy arrays to it so one is params in transposed format that is theta transpose you can read it as theta transpose and this is our x so once i do this i will just return this predictions okay so this is it about this particular function hypothesis compute hypothesis now i have to do is i have to define a function to compute the cost our mean squared error so let me name it as compute cost so what it needs so let's see first we will take the errors okay so errors can be taken uh, can be calculated by taking the difference between predicted values and actual values so let me say predictions minus actual okay and then i need i need squared errors correct square errors is equal to errors into errors so each element will be multiplied with itself so that we'll get the square of now after this i need to divide it by 2m by summing the errors so how i can do that all i have to do is msc that will be my final error right so that will be equal to np dot sum squared errors this will give us this sum and then divided by 2 into m correct so this formula i have written here so this is my compute cost then in the end i will be returning this msc so now i need predictions right i need actual values and then i need to find out m so how i can find out m so m will be equal to length of my actuals Right, so I will uh, tell you in a while. Okay, in a minute or two, I will come there. So this is my cost function. Now, let me quickly define my main method or function called gradient descent. I will name it as gradient descent, and then we'll see what parameters we require in the later step. So first step is to initialize the parameters. Correct. So we have only one feature so the learnable parameters will be 2 n plus 1 okay so i will initialize it to 0 in this case so let me name the variable as params and let me create np.0s i need 
two parameters, right? So, so in order to do that, how I can do it? So, you remember guys, we have our x, which will have x0 and x1, right? So, it will have two columns. But in our representation, x will be having two rows and 63 columns. 63 is the number of training records that we have in this particular data set. So, the number of rows will be equal to the number of parameters that we will be requiring, okay? Because each column represents one training example and each training example consists of two features. One is x0 and x1. So, we will have two rows. So, we need two parameters. So, np.0 x dot shape of 0, okay? I will tell you what we mean by this. So, I need x here, okay? x has one argument for this. Now, I have initialized the parameters. I will need to calculate the hypothesis. So, how I can do that? I have defined the function already for that, right? So, it is called as compute hypothesis. So, it will take parameters as one argument and x as another argument, okay? So, now we have our predictions. Now, we need to compute the cost. So, how I can get the cost? All I have to do is I have to call this particular method that I have defined here. Compute cost, this will return me mean squared error. Let me save it in some variable called as cost. So, I need actual, right? So, in order to have my actual, I need y, which is my actual. I will say actual is equal to y. And then, I will create another list here, okay? One list called as costs, which will store the cost at each iteration of gradient descent algorithm, okay? Now, I do not want to do it like this. I will just append it, costs dot append i will call the compute cost which will return me the cost okay compute cost predictions and actual so this one is done so compute cost step is done correct now i need to update the parameters so how i can update the parameters so for that i need to first have learning rate so i need to take that as my parameter learning rate as one of the parameters and i need to compute the partial derivatives these partial derivatives are also called as gradients, okay. So, let us compute the gradients. Gradients. So, how I can compute the gradients? Let us see that. So, the gradients can be computed as without using any for loop or without using the steps again and again. I can compute it as 1 by m into np dot matmal x comma errors. So, what are these errors? I need to have that errors as well. So, how I can have the errors? Errors is equal to predictions minus actual. So, this is the difference between predicted values and actual values that will give me my errors for each of the training example. So, this is how we calculate the gradients. Now, we have calculated the gradients. I have to update the parameter, correct? So, how I can do that? Params is equal to params minus learning rate into gradients, correct? So, this is my, so I have to enclose this in brackets. So, learning rate into gradients, the resulting value must be subtracted from my parameters. So, that if the slope is positive or negative, the theta will be moved accordingly towards right or towards left direction. Okay. So, this is about parameter replacement. So, now if you see the fifth step, we have to repeat the steps from 2 to 4 multiple times till we converge. So, what is our second step? We have to calculate the predictions. So, we have initialized this parameters. Now, all the steps should be within some for loop. So, let us say for i in range of iterations. So, these many number of times I have to repeat these steps. These many number of times I have to calculate the slope update the parameters, calculate the cost, calculate the hypothesis. Again, at that particular, uh, based on the derivative that I get, I will update the parameters. Again, repeat those steps till we arrive at the global minimum. Okay. So, that is why I am enclosing these steps in a for loop. So, I will just indent it so that all the steps are part of my for loop. Okay. So, this is how we can do it. Now, the return from this function would be return I need the parameters updated, okay, 
which will provide me the minimum cost and also I will want the costs so that I can plot it and check for each iteration the cost will be reducing. Okay. So, in order to just check that I am returning the cost here. So, this is it about my gradient descent. So, now we have to make some adjustment with respect to the data. Right. We have read the data in my data variable. Right. Now, let us define our x and y's. Okay. So, how I can do that? So, I can say x is equal to data of x. Okay. So, before this, let me just print first few rows of this data frame. So, it looks like this. It has two columns and I am just now displaying for, for current sake, I am displaying the first five reports. So, if you want to check the total shape of the data set, data dot shape, you will see it has 63 rows out of which the head will display only the first five reports and all the columns. So, this is how the data looks like. So, before proceeding, we will see if there are any missing values. Okay, That is the standard check we do for any machine learning algorithms. So, how I can do that? I can call, I can say data dot is null dot sum. Right? So, it will say for each column, if we have missing values, that count will be coming here. If we have two missing values for x, it will be 2. If we have no missing values for y, it will be 0. So, right now, both numbers are 0, which indicates that we do not have any missing values in our data set. So, we are good to go. Now, I have uh, written x equal to data of x dot values. This will give me the this column, this particular column in the numpy array. Okay. So, this is my x. Now, similarly, I will get my y dot values. Okay. So, now I have it. So, now if you see the shape of x, you will say 63, right? But I want the shape of x to be 2 by 63. I need it to be 2 rows and 63 columns. Why? Because each column should represent one training example. Each row of each column will be one feature. x0, one row, x1, second row, right? So, 2 rows and 63 columns. So, how I can do that? So, you see here, if I just display the x, it will have these values. 108, 19, 13 and so on. But I need to have x 0th feature. This will be treated as x 1 feature. But I want to have another column wherein I will have value 1 for all the records, right? That we call it as x 0. So, how I can get that into x? So, all I have to do is x is equal to np dot. I will call this method. This is called as column stack. So, how I can do this? np dot c. So, what I want? I want np dot ones, right? How many ones I want? I want as many as number of records I have. Okay. Yeah. Np dot ones length of x, comma, remaining values I want it as it is in my second column. Okay. So now if I execute this x and see the content, you see the x zero, x one. So this particular thing will represent us one training example. Okay. But we want it to be in a, another way. So, now if you check the shape of x, x dot shape, it will be 63 by 2. But we want it to be 2 by 63. So, how I can do that? x is equal to x dot t. So, I will just transpose it. Now, if you check the shape, it will be 2 by 63. Okay. So, we are done with mo modifying and preparing our x and y's. So, now that we have x and y's, all we have to do is we have to make use of these functions defined here in order to have our updates. Okay. So, first we will verify whether these functions or the logic that we have written here is working fine. So, in order to do that, let me create some local variables. So, let me have this params here. So, this is just for verification purpose. Okay verification purpose to check whether the functions that we have defined are working as our expectations. Okay. So, first let us calculate our predictions. Okay. So, in order to calculate predictions, we need parameters, right. So, parameters I will again define it as a local variable here. So, I have defined it. I have already x with me. In this case, in these steps, I have defined my x and y's. So, if I execute it, it says 
params, it says numpy has no attribute 0. So it should be np dot zeros. Okay. So now if you check, it will be perfectly working fine. Predictions dot shape, it will be 63. Why 63? We have 63 records. That's why we will have 63 predictions. Okay. Now if we check the values of predictions, it will all be zeros. Why? Because we are multiplying matrix with zeros along with the matrix with the features. So if you multiply anything with zero, the result will be zero, right? So we have all the zeros here. Now this is working as our expectation. The predictions or compute hypothesis is working just fine. Now we will see whether this compute cost is working as per our expectation. So how I can check that? So instead of actuals, there is no actuals right now, right? In the local variable. So all I have defined is within this function. So this actuals is present within this function. It is not available outside this function. So now what I will do, I will say actuals equal to y. Okay. And I have already my predictions here. And what else I require? I require m. Right. So how I can get my m? So, okay, m is also defined here. So, if I just execute it, you see it says actual is not defined because I have created an actual here. Now, if I execute it, that's it. So, it got executed. If I check this MSC, it should be a single number. See, this is a single number. Okay. So, this is our cost, cost function. So, cost function is working as expected. Now, all we have to verify is the remaining gradient descent function. So, how I can check it. So, I cannot check it for multiple iterations. I will check for just one time. So, in order to check that, I will copy all the steps outside here in my local as my local variables and local steps. And then I will execute them one by one. Okay. So, predictions, I will call compute hypothesis. I have my params already defined here. Right. And then I have my x. Errors, I will get it. Actuals also I have defined here. Cost. So, I do not want to have this cost because I have already verified the cost. Okay. I have verified the cost function here in this step. So, it is working fine. I do not want to calculate the cost again. So, now the main step I have to verify is gradients. This should result as a matrix or array with two elements in it because we have two learnable parameters. So, this particular uh, logic, whatever we have written here, should return as two numbers. Okay. So, we will say it. Then I am updating my parameters. The only missing thing here is learning rate. So, have I defined it? No, right. I have not created learning rate. So, let me learning rate. I have created it. Let us let me give some small value to it, 0 0.003. So, if I execute it, you see compute hypothesis is not defined. Why it is not defined? Did I execute it? Compute, yeah, I have not executed it. So that is the reason. So, if I execute it, perfect, right? So, it ran without any error, but we have to still verify whether this gradients variable is having two parameters. See, that is perfect. So, this is one parameter, this is another parameter. This is theta 0, this is theta 1. So, after updating the parameters, it will be initially it was 0, 0. After the first step, it is updated to 0 0.029 and 1.22. So, our function is working perfectly fine. Now that we have verified, what I will do? I will simply restart it. I will run it once again in the clear. So, first I will import the code. I will read the data set. Okay. I will check for null values or missing values. I will prepare my x and y's. Okay. So, I am adding x0 here and then converting my x into 2 cross 63 shape. How? I will just take the transpose of it. If I check the shape, it will be 2 by 63. Now that I have my requirements, I will say I will just define these functions and then now I am ready to call this one by one. So, what I have to do? All I have to do is I have to call this gradient descent, gradient descent. So, this will return me parameters and costs, right? So, params and costs is equal to, I have my x, I have my y, I need my learning rate, 
correct and also here i haven't defined m correct so i have to create it here so how i can create it m is equal to length of actual right so we have 63 records we can get it in this way or x dot shape of 1 so either way you can take the m parameter m variable here so now that we have everything in place i have to pass learning rate and iterations as well right so i have to have iterations now this i need to create two more variables learning rate 0, 0, 0, 0003 some small value i will give and then iterations let me run it for thousand times we'll see okay now if i execute it so okay so i have to remove this colon it says gradient design missing one position argument iterations okay so i have to pass iterations as well here so if i execute it numpy has no attribute zero again there is a mistake it's num np dot zeros so now again actual c is not defined there there are a lot of spelling mistakes i guess so where is the actual size so it is saying cost compute cost right so it is in compute cost so if i go to compute cost it is actual okay now we have a perfectly and without any error executed our gradient descent algorithm for thousand iterations now we will see by plotting whether at each iteration our cost has reduced or not so how i can check that i have my costs as list here right so if we check length of this cost it is thousand because we have run it for thousand iterations for each iteration we have calculated the cost and stored it in this list called as costs so now i will just plot it plt dot plot np dot arrange thousand so what i want to plot in y axis this will be my x axis it will arrange the numbers from 0 to 1000 y thousand because i am running for thousand iterations okay so now i have that and then i want costs right then i will just label it as cost now let me mark the legend in upper right location upper right so if i just plot it you see at each iteration the cost has reduced okay so this is how the cost should look like either it it will look sharp it will decrease sharply like this or it will gradually decrease this okay we will see how we can get there now that we have checked the cost, we will see our predicted values. Now predictions is equal to how I can get my predictions? It's np dot again our hypothesis, right? So it is params dot t comma x, correct? So these params now params variable consists the parameters after running gradient design for thousand iterations. So initially we had initialize it to 0 if you check the contents of params now see instead of 0 it will be 2.88 and 3.78 this is theta 0 and this is theta 1 so now if i run this i will have my predictions so now i want to check my predicted values against my actual values in the visualization how i can check it in visualization so all i have to do is i have to say plt dot scatter so x one right all row all columns first row all columns because my x is of shape 2 by 63 first row will be all equal equals to one and second row will have the actual values with, with respect to x and then i'll have my y right y is my actual values and then i'll label it as label equal to actual if i just say this you see we have a scatter plot these are my origin this is my original data set okay this is my x and this is my actual value y so against each of the values of x i have my y values plotted here so all i want to do is i want to have a predicted line here so that i can see how the predictions look like 
So I want to have a line graph. So how I can do that? I'll all I have to do is plt dot plot. So I have x. Okay, and then I have my predictions. I'll change the color to red, and then label to predictions. Okay, let me just capitalize it just to maintain the consistency. And then I'll have this legend. Okay, plt dot legend location at upper left. Because I have some blank space here, let me see if that fits perfect. So if I just execute it, you see. So this red line here is my predicted line. This is theta transpose x theta zero x zero theta plus theta one x one. So if you just relate it to the straight line equation y equal to m x plus c, this is the line with learned parameters theta zero and x zero equal to two point eight eight and three point seven eight respectively. So this is how you can quickly implement a simple linear regression with one variable without using any machine learning library. So I haven't used any machine learning library available like sklearn. Instead, I have made use of pure Python NumPy formulas to implement the gradient descent algorithm. Okay. So that's it for this video. So if you want to change this learning rate and then check how it affects, you can check it. Okay. So I have changed from zero 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 three to zero 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 one. Now, if I see this, you see there is a slight difference with the cost function, right? How it looks like. So if I reduce it further, you see it is somewhat completely different, right? Because the learning rate is completely different. In, in, earlier it was zero point zero 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 three. Now it is very less value. So let me again change it. See, now we are somewhat getting to the required shape. We are not actually concerned with the shape of the curves that we plot. All we want is to have the cost reduce at each iteration. So what happens if we set this learning rate to very high value? Sometimes instead of decreasing cost, we will see a reverse curve like this. The cost will be increasing further. Okay, or it can be like this, or it can be like this with each iteration the cost may be increasing so this learning rate plays an important role here so now if i check the predictions and the parameters will be different because i have changed the learning rate okay so the parameters will be again different and then these predictions but the line you see it doesn't vary much with respect to parameters and cost it may be different but just for the visualization purpose the predicted against the actual there is not much difference okay so this is how you can implement a simple linear regression from scratch in python using numpy okay so if you guys have any questions please post it in comment section i will try to get back to you with the answers in my next videos in the coming days i will try to upload another implementation video on multiple variables how we can utilize it okay so nothing changes we'll see that when it comes to the implementation of multiple vari variable regression okay so happy learning guys Till we see in the next video. Bye bye.